Hello, everybody, and welcome to Jack's Port Review. I'm Nancy Rubin, Senior Director of Communications for the Jacksonville Port Authority. Glad you could be with us today. Our guest is Katie Arroyo. She is with the Small Business Development Center at the University of North Florida. And, and Katie, so glad to have you. It's Tell me your title is international... Yes, Nancy, that's international yeah. trade specialist. Okay. Um, and you mm -hmm. deal then with people needing information on how to do international trade through the port, we hope. Um, so Thanks tell so. me a little bit about your position, Katie. And I appreciate you having me here. And, and Jack's Port, of course, is one of our valued partners. Um, so I help Florida small businesses with the process of export. Um, so we do that through one-on-one -on -one consulting, also through um, specialized training, such as introduction to export. And then we have um, a higher level program called the International Trade Certificate Program. And then also primarily, I develop comprehensive export marketing plans for companies that are looking to expand to new markets, ideally um, micro SME companies that are already maybe be reactively exporting, but don't quite have a plan yet. Um, so anyway, that's what I do in, in a little bit of everything else, right? <laughs> and so this um, really mm -hmm. supports small business in yes. a way that they mm -hmm. really might not be able to do on their own. Absolutely. And How is that? Absolutely. Well, the small business owner... Um, has limited resources, limited time, limited personnel, and the benefit of working with the Small Business Development Center on this partnership is actually with Enterprise Florida and the U.S. Commercial Service um, to develop these export marketing plans is that we have access to a network and uh, resource tools that normally cost thousands of dollars to subscribe to. Additionally, we have years of experience and global contacts that the average business owner just isn't aware of or they don't know where to start and where to look. Um, and as you, I'm sure with your experience in international, you understand that there's not one place to look for the information and, um, and it just takes a long time to really um, understand how to be successful in the international market. And not one size fits all also. I mean, That's one right. company may need a really kind of fine tune or customized plan. So, so let's mm -hmm. go back for people who are watching and may have know somebody or have a small business. How do you start mm -hmm. people think, thinking about exporting if they're only maybe doing business in Northeast Florida? Absolutely. You know, the one of the luxuries of living in our country is that we really want for nothing, you know. Um, and sometimes the small business owner um, isn't thinking international because their market's right here. But with right. the, the slowdown, the economic crisis, maybe some business owners have been receiving requests from overseas. They're looking into maybe finding an alternate stream. So one of the easiest ways is to look at your website traffic. You know, if you're getting hits from, let's say, Canada or Mexico or Australia, you might want to look into what the market is for your product. So, you know, when a client comes in to see me, I'll kind of do a quick what we call export readiness assessment. I'll look in to see if their if their management is ready for um, for international. Do they have the staff? Do they have the production capacity? Do they have the financial capital resources to potentially explore international markets? Um, so that takes it's a matter of identifying your product, um, finding out, you know, how that product is identified internationally and and we go from there and so. what do you think i mean ex besides just mm -hmm. not knowing or being mm -hmm. in a comfort zone right here mm -hmm. um what is it that keeps people from even thinking this way yes um, <laughs> well you know and for, for me um having been in the international world and having the global mindset, sometimes it's hard for me to even step outside of that. But I think so much of it is fear. It's it's the fear of unknown and, and fear of, you know, what if you invest all these resources into going international and you're not successful? Well, that can happen with any marketing campaign. You know, you you have to do your, your research before um, getting into it. So I would say there's the one, the fear. Also, um, the other one is the language barrier. Some companies think that, you know, I know I have a big market, let's say, in France, but I don't speak France and none of my employees speak France, French. But um, thankfully, you know, the U.S. And has invested quite a bit in having representation for us in other countries to help us with breaking through, you know, breaking mm -hmm. the ice and introducing us to business owners overseas. Uh, and, and, and you bring up some good points. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I know I've had this conversation before, mm -hmm. the, the fear, okay, you don't know the language, you don't know the currency, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that you might not understand the culture. 
Yes, culture is so important. Um, you know, and and really, um, in the U.S., we are so unique. You know, we talk <laughs> about that um, American advantage. That the, the special thing about America is that we're so transactional based. And I would say, you know, ninety percent of the rest of the world is more relationship based, and mm. that comes down to culture and and understanding that 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 foreign buyer or, or seller wants to know about you rather than the actual transaction itself. They want to know that they can trust you and do business with you personally. And so for us, that's kind of a foreign concept. You know, we're more interested in the sale and the contract. Mm -hmm. and, and the, the price. Right, the <laughs> price, the you know, return on investment. And, um, and that is so linked to culture, you know, it's deeply rooted cultural practices. And so this is something then the liaisons that you mm -hmm. have in other countries can help small businesses here with. And that, that's something that, another great thing we have in Northeast Florida is a collaboration among resource partners like Jacksport um, through U.S. Commercial Service and Enterprise Florida, who are other um, international development entities um, at different you know levels of the government, basically, right. that help us with um, contacting their representatives overseas. Um, so, like I said, it's just a matter of knowing where to look. I guess, you know, right now, <laughs> trying to think as a small mm -hmm. uh, business mm -hmm. owner, you mm -hmm. know, I have my husband's a small business owner, okay. my dad was mm -hmm. a small business Also, travel. I might stop and say, wait a second, I don't have the budget to go mm -hmm. to France to visit my customers there. Or uh, how do you handle that mm -hmm. with folks? I mean, obviously, at some mm -hmm. point, there needs to be that one on one contact. Absolutely. Well, another way is to. Um, possibly to participate in what's called the reverse trade mission. Um, this is part of that investment that our country has made in promoting exports and that we'll bring over experts from overseas, let's say um, the commercial service officers or diplomats that, that are in our offices overseas and bring them to the U.S. to offer business advice um, and information about other countries to um, our mm -hmm. business owners here. For example, this um, is very fortuitous you bring this up because in um, October, I'm sorry, September, commercial services host and doing business in Europe, um, kind of reverse trade mission here in Jacksonville. Oh, interesting. So, Open yes. to anybody? Uh, right. Well, of course, there's a little bit of registration involved, uh -huh. but uh, but it'll it's actually um, hosted by the U.S. Commercial Service, but it'll be at UNF um, at our office, at the SBDC office okay, here in I'm Jacksonville. Okay, and I'm sure you'll be doing some publicity yes. and promotion of it, and mm -hmm. you yes. can look at the port website. We'll do some to assist yes. you with getting folks connected with that, which brings Absolutely. me to a real basic question mm -hmm. in that. In your experience, mm -hmm. how do people get connected to you? How do they find you? How, what mm -hmm. brings them to you unless you're finding them? Absolutely. Well, of course, you know, um, square one is, you know, come to our website, fsbdc.unf.edu. Um, additionally, uh, they can, you know, they can re re request a session for consulting with me. Um, they can also check out um, different events that we do. Um, also, you know, there's basically three of us that work um, from different agencies that, that work in international consulting. I mentioned um, uh, Enterprise Florida, yes. U.S. Commercial Service, and yes. SBDC. So generally, we kind of, you know, refer people to each other. We'll, we'll collaborate um, with different clients. So if you see an international event coming up that's business related, most likely the three of us or at least one of us will be there um, and can. And so, but in your experience, oh, what drives yes. most oh, of your sense. people to you? I mean, how oh, do sure. they come to the realization oh, that they should even come and talk with you? Yes, absolutely. So um, something that I get is, you know, I'm getting those inquiries. You know, uh, I'm getting inquiries from Brazil, and I hear that there's a huge market there. Oh, so they're and I go realizing there. that there might be something there, and so they're looking exactly. for a resource in you. They're they're having that, or let's say they uh, they have just they've already. Um, place so or, or, or you know, filled an order. Oh yeah. Let's say they're shipping to Mexico and they're having an and issue get getting stuck. through customs or yeah. they need to give them uh, a quote, a price and they, you know, didn't realize they need to include, you know, shipping insurance yeah. and customs and tariffs and all, all of these um, intricacies that you wouldn't know unless you've kind of lived in this world a little bit. So, um, and so they reach yes. out to you, yes, and they you're there as a resource for them right. for whatever their questions are. Exactly, and and I, actually, also, I'm I'm a certified global business professional, and what that certification means is that I have the um, uh, understanding of 
trade finance, uh, supply chain, logistics, marketing, international management, so that um, you know I've I've gone through the qualification and the testing to show that that I can I can help point them in the right direction, and ideally give them one-on-one -on -one advice about the exact market that they're going to. So go so. ahead, Katie. Tell us one of your <laughs> success stories. You don't have to name mm -hmm. names if you think people sure. might be shy about sharing that kind of information. But mm -hmm. tell me in your how long have you been at the UNF Center? Well, I. I've been here for about a year, but I've been in this business for the past three years. So describe so. one of your success. Get people motivated out there to sure. come and see you. Definitely. Um, I'll tell you, um, I'll have to refer back to my days in Oklahoma. Okay. Um, I, uh, this is, one, of course, one of my favorite clients. Um, he actually um, develops customized barbecue sauces, which normally you would think, oh, barbecue sauce is a dime a dozen. But this this guy had something special. He's this big, tall cowboy from Oklahoma, oh, yeah. and um, developed this barbecue sauce and ended up going on a trade show, or I should say, a trade mission to Germany, and brought his guitar and had his poncho and everything and his sauces, and ended up you know building a relationship with a distributor to supply um, you know, the whole kind of northeast end of the country, um, going into other countries in Europe to his distributor. And he was, I would say, within three days, was famous. You know, oh, with really? his guitar, yeah. big cowboy guy. Yeah. And from there, a year later, ended up expanding to Finland. And, um, and, and through, through the support of the Small Business Development Center and also SESTA, which is an agriculture-focused um, export assistance agency, he was able to build relationships in Finland to where now he's developing barbecue smokers, um, especially for Finland, because they're, they do not use smokers. <laughs> so um, I would say at the time that I met this gentleman was about four years ago, he didn't know the first thing about international. And so what he did was took the initiative to come to our training classes and um, and learn about going international and within two and a half years was you became a sophisticated exporter although always room to learn yes. you know um, but I always think and he actually is literally from Muskogee so I say you know okay from Muskogee <laughs> can export you know anybody can right <laughs> and but you do what you bring something up mm -hmm. there he had something distinctive also yes. that set him apart maybe from That's other true. folks that had come around with products it's true it's true you know I think he had that something extra and he had a good team behind him and he wasn't afraid to ask for help mm -hmm. And, um, you know, understanding that international, at times you can bring in a premium, you know. There's got to be sometimes mm -hmm. when, um, you know, it doesn't work mm -hmm. out for people for whatever reason, or they try it for a while mm -hmm. and they decide it's just not worth their investment. That happens? It can happen, yes. I, I think probably what, when that is most likely to happen is if you're jumping in too soon. Um, you know, not doing your research, um, investing so much up front without realizing the, the true potential of your product. And that's where so. you come in or some of these other partner agencies yes. come in as well. We can uh, at times give the message that isn't always, you know, the message that you want to hear. But right. at, at the same time, what we want to do is partner with the business owner to develop the right strategy to be successful. In so. whatever way you can do that. Exactly. So people come through to you through mm -hmm. your website or through events or through referrals from some right. of these other. So typically how many in a month, Katie, do you help? Sure. Um, I would say because my focus is on writing or researching export marketing plans, um, I'm focusing on one client ma ma major the majority of my time, and then I would say probably seven to ten beyond that mm -hmm. um, because the, the plans I write are at two months at a time. Um, but then when we have training classes, sometimes that number kind of uh, raises up. And, and the great thing is that um, within my center of the SBDC, we actually have seven of us that are certified global business professionals so that even if I'm unable to um, help at first, I can have one of my colleagues assist as well. And so, so another maybe a success story mm -hmm. from this area, something that you can refer to for us in the last year? Well, I, I can tell you um, what's interesting is to see kind of the, the light bulb turn on or the eyes mm -hmm. open up. Um, we have uh, a client that I'd say that my, my resource partners have been working with for the past few years that um, finally did an, um, sent an international shipment to Mexico. But the challenge was they were having a hard time getting paid and they were almost ready to just drop the order to, to let it go and then through through our connections they learned about what's called export credit insurance through XM Bank, the Export Import mm -hmm. Bank and they were able to finance the payment so that the shipment could go through and they could get paid later by their customer. I know it's kind of it gets kind of complicated quickly but in other countries a lot of times they want to have the ability to pay in 90 days 
whereas we're used to getting paid with cash up front. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you can get export credit insurance to get paid up front. To make sure that you get your mm -hmm. money and they get Guaranteed. their comfort level and everybody's happy all the way around. Exactly. And so exactly. is this particular business, do you know, going to continue in the international yes. realm? Um, well, actually, I just um, completed and delivered their export marketing plan. And um, so what's, what's been really great is to watch them over the past year start bulking up their staff and start, you know, getting the training that they need in the, the cultural aspect mm -hmm. and, and the actual ways business is done in, in their top markets. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a long process. But, you know, if you hang in there and, and keep devoting resources to developing that market, you, you can be successful. And I how think. rewarding for you that you actually oh. see the results when it does work out, even though it might take a while that you can mm -hmm. say wow you know they're they're using the information we gave them to oh, absolutely. prosper absolutely and I would say because um, I've invested years of my life into developing <laughs> this skill and knowledge um, that I'm able to actually you know reinvest that that education and knowledge into my clients is very rewarding we're going to talk about you in <laughs> just a minute but thank you Katie oh, we're going to take a break right here um, Stay with us, Katie Arroyo from UNF and the Small Business Development Center will return with us in just a moment. Into your new career with Jacksport.com. Dozens of companies throughout Jacksonville do business with the Jacksonville Port Authority. And right now, Jacksport.com is your one stop for all jobs related to our bustling seaport. From warehousing and port operations to marketing and logistics, at Jacksport.com you can search local jobs available from local companies doing business with the port. Jacksport.com is a free service from the Jacksonville Port Authority in partnership with WorkSource. Sail into your new career with Jacksport.com. But we have a good selection of stories. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Nancy Rubin with mm -hmm. Jacksport, and my guest today on Jacksport Review is Katie Arroyo with yeah. UNF Small Business Development Center. Thank you so much. You okay. mentioned you're an international business specialist. Did I get that right again? Um, uh, international, international trade, trade specialist. specialist. Yes. And mm -hmm. so, what do you? Mm -hmm. say to people watching who maybe mm -hmm. don't even think export and you had mentioned right. earlier it's hard for you because you think so on such a broad worldwide scale but um, it's not just a product you might put mm -hmm. in a box and send to Mexico or France an export can also be a service. Yes, that's a great point. And I think sometimes that's not always the first thing that comes to mind. But when we say services, professional services, generally uh, uh, some kind of consulting that requires a, a higher education degree. So, for example, architecture or engineering um, could be even surveying and mapping technology or, or, or skills or consulting. Um, sometimes you see these um, this productivity and, and workplace efficiency um, consulting um, that could apply in internationally as well. And that would be so, considered an export and something yes. that you could assist people with writing a plan or coming up with the process. Exactly. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. talk to everybody out there and tell sure. them what they need to think about if they have never mm -hmm. thought about exporting. Sure. Um, well, they need to... W Oftentimes what they have to do is really re reflect on where their business is and, and that could be a matter of determining is my business flat um, and what kind of goals do I have five years from now and am I achieving those goals and understand that your product may have the potential overseas to meet and exceed those goals. You know, in the United States, we're only 4% of the world population. 96% of the population of the world is outside of our borders. And not only that, 75% of the world's purchasing power is outside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. So in our field, we like to say, can you afford to ignore three out of four of your potential customers? You know, it's it's there's just so much potential there. Um, so when we come to the export marketing plan process, I know we were kind of talking over the break about this. Um, there there are there is kind of a bit of a qualification to um, participate in the program, and because of the great investment through the state of Florida and Enterprise Florida. Um, Clients who do qualify get a scholarship for $2,500 to participate in the program, and there is a $500 fee for the export marketing plan. But as a result of participating in this program, you learn about not only target markets, but any kind of regulations or uh, permits you might need, tariffs. Um, I do my best effort to actually find buyers overseas for you or potential client, client base for you overseas, so that once you're done with that service, you can actually participate in what's called the Gold Key Matchmaker Service, which 
which is uh, like a almost like a matchmaker date service between okay. buyer and seller that uh, that the commercial service will vet buyers overseas for you to meet with. Or you can also participate in what's called the Target Sector Trade Show Grant Program, where you go to a, a specialized trade show overseas to meet uh, a wealth of potential buyers mm -hmm. through Enterprise Florida. And to one really valuable mm -hmm. piece of information too is whether you're qualified to do this. This yes. to to get to that stage mm -hmm. where you receive the scholarship and you can, uh, and, and that might be right. very valuable in its essence and its essential. It's an essential piece of information. Right. Yes, yes. So qualifications would be um, at least uh, four or more employees in business for at least five years. Uh, product must be at least fifty one percent content. Um, so and that could be a matter of even if you have to import some of the raw materials to manufacture your content, the content and the IP value manufacturing process has to be at least 51% United States content, um, plus uh, anywhere from 250000 to $10 million in sales. Um, and I'm, I have my little uh, cheat yeah, sheet yeah, here, yeah, glad you just do. in case. And we're, we're looking for um, new to export or infrequent exporters uh -huh. are, um, are preferred. And, and let me backtrack to the, the sales, at least 500000 to $10 million in sales. Um, so, and then also the, the products must be, product or service must be provided from a Florida location. So, and we've had, this program has been going on for about the past four years. We've had both service providers and uh, manufacturers apply. So um, that that's the, the joy I have is, is the challenge and, and it's almost like a, being a private investigator, uh, you know, for a company. It out, to figure out the puzzle. Exactly, think to outside the, the box. Together. You know? So mm -hmm. you also have in your cheat sheet um, some mm -hmm. events upcoming that you wanted to yes. connect people. You mentioned one earlier, but it's worth going back over. Absolutely. The Doing Business in Europe Roadshow through Commercial Service is being held at the um, UNFSBDC at, at, on campus at UNF on September 10th. We also have um, Export University hosted by uh, U.S. Commercial Service at Jack's Port. I'm sorry, uh, Jack's Chamber. Jack's uh -huh. Chamber, um, which that will be on August 6th, which, which is a Wednesday. And coming up in October this fall, uh, my uh, center will be hosting Getting the Most Out of International Trade Shows training. So keep posted of our website for that, and then of course the uh, the this all leads into our big program that is a collaboration with Jacksport Commercial Service and Enterprise Florida and the SPDC. It's the International Trade Certificate Program, which is a six-week program where we bring in the experts, the 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 bankers, the customs experts, the compliance experts, management experts, um, and actual businesses that are exporting or new to export that talk about their experience. Over six weeks, we have this program, uh, generally from February to March. The last class is amazing because they go to Jack's Port and they take a tour of the port, yes. led you know personally by Jack's Port, and so it's just a wonderful program. Um, there, that that does cost three hundred fifty dollars, but they can um, anyone can come to our website to check out uh, registration for that event. And, and we'll try to link to some of this on the Jack's Port website as well mm -hmm. as it comes up, and we help you um, to publicize some of these things. Right. I did want to mention we talked about increasing exports. We also yes. have the um, Global Cities Initiative, which <laughs> Jacksonville mm -hmm. was chosen as one of the most recent class participants mm -hmm. in the Brookings Institute effort to have people look differently at exporting mm -hmm. and to think about it not only as an individual small business but as a community and a region yes. what is it we do that's so unique mm -hmm. that we might capitalize on so what do you think of, of all of those kinds of pieces of the puzzle too I mean what a prestigious opportunity for Jacksonville to be selected I think it's only six cities a year for that are selected and the, the amazing thing we have is Jacksport we have the transportation and logistics industry which 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 studies have shown that the Florida Chamber's trade and logistics study shows trade and logistics jobs pay 15% higher wages. Um, you know, what an opportunity we have. And, and this Global Cities Initiative is bringing together all those thought leaders and, and, and uh, public sector, private sector, educational leaders to kind of get on the same page and understand what resources there are for business owners and education and, and, and private sector leaders to And connect improve more people with all experts. of those resources. Exactly. You know, that's it. The resources mm -hmm. are there. And also to say, look, you know, there is wisdom in attracting business to Jacksonville, to having them yes. move here, locate here. There is wisdom yes. in that process, and we need to continue to work hard at that. Mm -hmm. But look, there's also what you tell people every day, Katie. There mm -hmm. are, what did you say? Are you going to ignore three out of four of your potential customers? There are mm -hmm. these opportunities that are waiting to be tapped and realized. Let's stop here and talk a little bit about your career path. This has Absolutely. always been a passion of yours, international yes. and travel and mm -hmm. understanding cultures around the world. How did you get started on that path? 
Well, I, I'd say um, some people are born global. Um, I'm very fortunate. I have parents uh, that uh, raised my sister and I to appreciate other cultures. I uh, come from a multi-ethnic family. I've been traveling by myself since I was about age 10 to visit family overseas. was very fortunate in high school at age 16 to live in Chile for six months as an exchange student. Didn't speak a word of Spanish when I <laughs> went there and you know, lived and in the family and, and was very fortunate in college at University of South Florida. I did my undergrad in international studies and was able to um, participate in two study abroads, um, one in Cuba legally and another one in Iceland and then um, different <laughs> climates there Katie well, certainly yes so <laughs> to had to opposites, pack a little you know, bit differently for especially the Iceland coming from trip. Florida yeah, you know no kidding. Um, and then thankfully with uh, um, I worked in the private sector for six years and I was very fortunate to um, launch a, an overseas uh, global service center in Costa Rica and so I worked in Costa Rica for four months and and really got a, a vision of the other side of the business mm -hmm. um, working there and then later in graduate school in Oklahoma I studied um, international trade and development and uh, was able to work on a humanitarian project in Sierra Leone in West Africa. Wow. Um, so I just have a real passion for international. Um, you know, I, I, I love meeting new people and, and learning about them. And, and I think the really eye-opening thing, you know, beyond this, the skills of international, it's so crucial to foster a global mindset and understand that while we're so fortunate to live here and have all the conveniences in the world, our way is not the only way. And that we find that there are other ways of doing things. Maybe we can develop products to service those other ways of doing things, right. you know. And and, uh, and anyway, I, I just think it's so crucial to have an appreciation for other So if, if we have people watching who have mm -hmm. young people in their lives or they're mm -hmm. at a crossroads in their careers and they're, you know, interested in mm -hmm. looking at, I mean, what would you say to people who are interested in, maybe not necessarily your exact sure. kind of career, mm -hmm. but careers internationally and, and with that global kind of mindset, what would you tell mm -hmm. them to do? Well, um, I would say the easiest and lowest cost way is to just start looking at international news, um, you know, watching international shows, listening to international programs on the radio, um, invest in your in your kids, you know, send them on a study abroad, even if it's over the summer or for a semester, um, you know, in college, do study abroad. At work, look for opportunities for, you know, international interactions. You know, we're fortunate in Jacksonville in that we have some international events that come through um, periodically, the, um, you know, I believe there was this uh, global showcase a few yeah. months ago, you know, and, and seek out an international um, friend, a new international friend. You know, in Florida, we have so many internationals coming in and out and, and living here, you know, even having conversations with people that are from other countries and learning a bit about, you know, how they're, you know, what's their day like and what's it like to go, you know, um, make a photocopy or, or, or buy lunch, you what know. What was your graduate program then, if I just yes. might mention that for mm -hmm. people? What is that Actually, called? Actually, sure. I, I did my master's degree in international studies with a focus on trade and development okay. and that was at Oklahoma State University. Yes. I will say that U University of North Florida has um, an international business flagship program and I just read that they're starting an international studies uh, graduate program okay. there as well. So there are opportunities yes. far and wide. Mm -hmm. Iceland, uh, Sierra Leone, uh, where, what yes. else did you mention? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so nice to have you Thank with you. us today pleasure. Katie and tell us your mm -hmm. website again slowly. It's a lot of initials but it yes. stands for the for the uh, the Florida small Small Business Development Center um, dot UNF dot edu. If I go to the UNF website, will I be able to sort of search for international business and, and find you that yes. way? Yes, we're part of the Coggin College of Business. Coggin so. College of Business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Katie. Thank you very for nice having me. to have Thank you. you. Great to have you with us. If you want more information about the port or to connect to any of our partners, mm -hmm. it's jacksport.com. We're also all over social media. You can find us that way. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. Thanks. You're watching Public Access on Xfinity 99, exclusive programming for Jacksonville Xfinity subscribers.